I hope it's Steve from that old Yorkshire geek. Um, he made a review of... I'm, I'm in a bad mood. You know why I'm in a bad mood? <laughs> I'm laughing, I know, but... I've just done all this once. Been through all this episode once. Realised I didn't hit record. So I've got to start all over again. So if I sound a bit fed up, it's because I've got to repeat everything that I've just said to to, to spoke to myself for half an hour. <sighs> I'm in a mood now. Anyway... <laughs> Welcome to my review of episode 3 of season 5 of Star Trek Lower Decks. The last season, or the final season, we'll see. Don't care now. I don't care now because I'm in a mood. Anyway, this episode's, episode's called, um, I've forgotten already, uh, Exotic Nanite Hotel. Uh, it's obviously a play on Exotic Marigold Hotel, which I've not seen. Um, but um, I hear it's good. Anyway... I enjoyed the episode. I didn't enjoy the review of just spoken out to the ether. <sighs> Here we go. Let's go through it again. <laughs> oh, I'm fuming. I am a bloody fuming. Right. There we go. Here we see the Cerritos. It is recording. Just double check, make sure I'm recording. There's the Cerritos. The lovely California class. And off we go. Right, we begin. Right. There they are. Um, they're orbiting a planet. Does it mention which planet they're orbiting? I can't remember. But anyway, this is the cruise liner, in quotes. Um, Cosmic Duchess. And it looks more like a space station to me than a cruise liner. But uh, whatever. Uh, also kind of reminds me of the, the album cover for uh, Van Halen's 5150. But uh, anyway. Right, so they're there. And they're looking. Uh, they've got a mission now. They've got to capture... Uh, some rogue nanites that are there you go consuming metal to self replicate they're causing havoc on the cruise liner there you go our lower deckers have been assigned the mission to um, um, retrieve the rogue nanites so we've seen Tendy's back um, and um, Talin to what's the face is, is back uh, is happy to see her back uh, but before they can go Boimler gets taken away by Ransom to go on a secret undercover mission because they've got to go and look for a rogue admiral. So we've got rogue nanites and a rogue admiral. Uh, but then uh, Tendy, uh, not Tendy, let's talk about Tendy, Jennifer, remember the Andorian, who's got a weirdly human name. Maybe she's half human. I don't know. I know bugger all about her. Uh, she comes along there, she goes kisses um, Marina because apparently they were in a relationship. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't obviously have seen these two together, and I thought they were just. I thought it were alluded to that there was something romantic going on, uh, or that Jennifer fancied Marina, you know, in that way. But I didn't think anything had come of it. But apparently it did, and they were together for a while, it seems. But Marina thought they'd broken up, because she hasn't spoken to her for ages. But anyway, right, the episode continued. The, the titles come on, and. Um, <laughs> Um, in my live review that I did last week uh, of the first two episodes I think I forgot to mention I noticed you know because the new things are added each season for these and um, the, the, the Apollo's green hand and uh, Vija in the background appearing and I forgot to mention the bloody Tholians and the weaving a Tholian web I think I forgot to mention that anyway there we go anyway, we see uh They've got Vija's cloud arriving. Anyway, right, so off we go. Right, Boimler arrives with this uh, undercover shuttle. And um, uh, they're going undercover as a trio of vacation bros. He's going to be, I've forgotten already. Um, he's uh, with Zach Ransom. And Billups wants to be called Gilbert Manhandle. <laughs> For some reason, that just, I just find that hilarious. Gilbert Manhandle. Don't know why, it just does, I just think it's funny. But uh, Ransom says, no, you're called something else. Um, I can't remember, but never mind. Oh, Zandy Billups, but no, he wants to be called Gilbert Manhandle. Uh, and I don't know what name they gave to Boimler. Did they give him a name? I don't know. Um, I don't think they did, did they? But anyway, Boimler comes on and says, Jet. He says, what happened to you? We see he's all injured. And he says, says Commander Ransom happened. He sent him on a dangerous mission or whatever, where he lost both of his hands. He says, um, it, it shows it in a minute. There we go. 
lost both of his hands. So he says, Ransom's a bad man. He sends young officers um, on dangerous stuff. So he doesn't have to do the dangerous things. He uses them as canaries you know, in the coal mine. So now uh, Boimler's worried now that that's why he's sending him on... Um, He's taking him on this mission, but Boimler's there, look, with his speedos, <laughs> or whatever they are, I don't know. Anyway, so off they go, right. Uh, meanwhile, the um, the rest of the lower deckers, but they're not lower deckers anymore, are they? but never mind. Um, they're getting ready to, uh, to, to round up these um, rogue nanites that Rutherford's calling glumpuses. Um, and Mariner's got to find a way to break up with um, Jennifer once and for all. Uh, here they the noted the damage caused by the uh, the Glumpuses, as I said, but uh, Tendy thinks that's a cute name because Tendy's got a lovely... I love Tendy's voice for some reason. I just think he's got a lovely voice. The actress that does it. Anyway. Uh, right, so... So they're going to do that. Uh, we see... Uh, we find Jennifer. There she is making a trap uh, to catch them. Uh, and we learn that, because uh, Marina was going to go over and break up with her once and for all, but then we find out that she's been promoted and she's moving to the Manitoba. This is her final mission. So Marina thinks she's she's got away with causing a scene now. She can just do a final mission because they're going to break up um, organically, so to speak, because they'll be apart. So she's going to go with that. Uh, there you go. Uh, right. Uh, meanwhile... Um, Boimler's been putting um, suntan lotion on and um, Ransom tells him the sun is artificial and it knows when you've been sufficiently tanned. But we find out later that that's not quite true. But anyway, so anyway, they've got to start asking about um, to ask where uh, Admiral Milius has got to. And they go split up and see if anybody saw him. So they're going to start asking questions and uh, of the of the uh, the other guests and this is where we at first we get to see a race that we've never seen before i don't think we've heard them mentioned in deep space nine the galamites remember dax uh, jadzia dax used to date uh well, i think she dated i don't know if she had a, like a romantic uh, it's kind of alluded to that she had a romantic relationship with uh, uh, captain Baudet. Uh, i can't remember what ship we were on but uh, we learned that he was a Gallimite, we learned that he had a, a transparent cranium, uh, but we'd never actually seen him, and I'd always assumed that they were essentially humanoid, you know, like Vulcans, Bolians, etc., you know, but, you know, maybe a different colour or whatever. Uh, but it, we find out that... Um, we find out that they're, they're not... There they are. They're, uh, yeah, they're humanoid in that they've got two legs and two arms, but... Um, Apart from that, the heads are very different. They've got, like, sharp fangs or whatever. But they do have transparent craniums. So what Jadzia Dax saw in him, I don't know. Maybe Captain bode has got an amazing personality. They're also messy eaters. <laughs> but uh, anyway. <laughs> anyway, maybe that's what Dax found appealing. So then they go over and ask, uh, going to talk to these um, Cree Tassons, who you may remember from Enterprise. Um, uh, the the race that is um, su super easily offended. I, mean, I think we saw him a couple of times in Enterprise. First, when um, um, somebody ate in front of him. They don't like to see people eat. That's the worst taboo, eating in public. Um, they don't like that. And then the other time, I think Porthos uh, went for a pee on uh, some sacred tree or whatever, and Captain um, Archer had to uh, do an apology um, and with a, 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 a quasi-futuristic chainsaw, do this ritual and all stuff. But anyway, they're quite annoying, to be honest. The makeup's good for the Cree Tassons, but uh, they're quite an, an annoying race, and they need to chill. But they haven't chilled because Boimler goes over, drinking and eating, and sets them off. But anyway, anyway, so next they've got to go up to the top of this mountain because um, there's somebody up there who knows how to get into uh, Milius's um, what they call it compound. They call it. You know, it's not really a compound. Remember, this is a hotel. It's a, like a, a resort, uh, but they're trying to make out. It's like um, 
uh, Apocalypse Now or something like that. But anyway, anyway, she's doing her trap, and uh, but the um, the uh, the Glumpus doesn't take the bait. Meanwhile, Talin, we learn, is a fan of Krog on the rocks. Is a, a musician um, with his vibe tubes. There they are. Uh, a bit like them. Oh, they call them. <sighs> that, that musical instrument that you don't touch. You go. It's got like a stick in the circle. What they call them? I did a story about it quite recently. And I've forgotten already. Anyway, never mind. Um, is that. And she's a fan. She's a fan. So, we don't often see musicians. Um, you know, like pop stars in Star Trek, do we? But this is a case of it. They all seem to prefer classical music, don't they? In in classic Star Trek. But uh, for the most part. Anyway, right, so there we go. The Glumpus doesn't take the bait and off it goes. So they decide to phaser the, the bait to make it a bit more palatable. And uh, that works. It comes along and it... Um, it takes the bait, there it goes, and it goes, but it makes it, it, it get, grows even bigger and bursts out of the um, the container, so they've got to go chasing after it now on this hover golf cart. Anyway, meanwhile, uh, Boimler's uh, climbed, they've climbed to the top of this mountain. Isn't there a ski lift? I mean, it's a resort, isn't it? Crying out loud. I mean, there's all skis, racks of skis at the top, so you'd think there'd be a ski lift, wouldn't you? But anyway. Um, so we've got to talk to this, uh, this this woman that knows how to get in, and they send um, send Boimler. Obviously, he thinks you know they send him. He talks about can you know the canary. What does he say? Now we go. The canary is about to fly, and there goes canary. Don't know. <laughs> anyway, he, can't, he finds out he can't ski. How do you make this gravity stop? And he grabs up, grabs hold of this alien. I don't know what it is. It looks like a bloody muppet, doesn't it? But We've probably seen one before, I don't know. But he um, grabs hold of this lump on his back and he says, stop grabbing my genitals. And he says, what are they doing on your back? He says, where else would they be? Because as we know from Star Trek Six, not all people have their genitals in the same place. <laughs> but he's not one of them aliens. He's a different sort. Well, I think he is. Anyway, so he ends up falling. He goes down the, the slope and ends up falling. Look, ah! Uh, but he's fine, don't worry. There we go. And this woman that he's supposed to talk to finds him and says, that's the first time I've ever seen anybody not die falling off that cliff. And then he mentions Starfleet for some reason. Um, what does he say? Um, oh, my, yes. Guess I'm lucky that Starfleet, what does he say, keeps me in space. And she goes, you're Starfleet. And then she runs away. Because uh, Boyle was a bit of an idiot, but never mind. Uh, right. The... Um, She's still chasing after the um, uh, the Glumpus, um, and it goes into the theatre where Co Krog, 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 it's Krog, in it. In the previous version of this review that I forgot to hit record on, I was saying Krog reminded me of the um, the rock alien from um, uh, Thor. Uh, uh, Thor Ragnarok and Thor Love and Thunder, I think you were in as well, weren't it? Uh, but in Thor Ragnarok, the Taika Waititi voiced creature, um, it reminded me of him. And I thought, actually, it probably is based on him because he's called Krog in this and he's called Korg in that, isn't it? So there we go. So it's a Marvel reference. I don't know if you've seen them before. I'm sure I'll be told that we have. <laughs> uh, maybe he's one of the rock creatures from Star Trek V. From the centre of the galaxy. From Shakari. Probably not. I don't know. Anyway. Right, so they're working out what to do. Um, uh, Mariner and Jennifer are kind of falling out. Um, even though they're supposed to be, you know, she's on her last mission and they're supposed to be Mariner's trying to stay friendly with her and all that for this final mission. But they're, they're kind of uh, at loggerheads. Uh, but anyway, the. Um, oh, well, before we get to that. Uh, we're getting into the heart of darkness now. See, they're going down the river in their inner tubes. Is that what they call them? Whatever. Um, it's supposed to be like Apocalypse Now. Um, there you go. They're being watched from the bank by uh, an Andorian 
um, and two other people. So anyway, anyway, they get captured. The 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 upshot of that is they get captured. Um, um, Oh, my, Talin's looking at uh, Krog's instruments, his vibe tubes. For some reason, I don't know why. Vibe tubes, it, remind, it makes me think of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. For some reason. But the vibe tubes in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, I don't know. Maybe they've been in Star Trek before, I don't know. Maybe the space hippies use them. I can't remember. But, uh, anyway. The name of that instrument popped in my head and then disappeared. I can't remember what it was. Never mind. Never mind. Oh, it did it again. Is it Summit, summit Phone or Summit Gram? I think it's Summit Phone. I can't bloody remember. Anyway, whatever. Tell me in the comments what it's called. Um, let's see, they're falling out. Look. Um, but we see that the uh, Glumpus has eaten some more stuff and turned into a giant icosahedron. Um, and if, you, if you're watching me, um, me, uh, me videos about me live streams about uh, watching each episode and uh, of Star Trek, and in season two of the original series, there's an episode called uh, "By Any Other Name." Uh, where these baddy aliens from the Andromeda galaxy um, turn the Enterprise crew into these these cubes, Nikon with dodecahedrons, because um, they're like this, you know, poly polygonal shape. But actually, I think they were these icosahedrons. But uh, anyway, so I'm guessing, I think in this is is a reference to that episode. I think, just just the shape, you know, but um, and the sparkly aspect to it. But whatever, um, I'm going to say it is. There you go, it goes rolling off, and uh, it, it gathers up the rest of the uh, the team. It gathers up, the, so they're trapped inside the icosahedron, but they're not killed, don't worry, because it's, you know, it's fun. Right, they're being captured, the chained up, look, by um, Milius's um, people. Uh, congratulations on being hostages <laughs> in Awol Falls. Remember, all these are guests of the hotel. Uh, I'm guessing it's, they think it's some sort of um, um, uh, role-playing thing. But anyway, so we're going to get to meet the Admiral. There he is. Um, see him in shadow. Uh, but then when he comes out, he's just a normal chap. Grey hair. And the sun has obviously got to him because he's all pink. And you can see there where he's, uh, he's not been sunburnt, where he's had his sunglasses on. So Anyway. He wants Boimler to join him. Um, because we learned that he went on all the, the the Starfleet sent him on all the rubbishy missions to milk space whales. He wanted to go and study new life and all that stuff, but they ended up having him uh, milking space whales. And and Boimler says the gar even the Garmaganda and, and even the Galaxy's Child one. And he goes all of them. I thought the Galaxy's Child one. Does that, does that mean that uh, the episode titles for for Star Trek are in the Starfleet logs. There must be, mustn't there? <laughs> anyway, um, but obviously, um, you know. It, it, um, oh, before we get to that, so, he's, so he wants him to join. Um, you know, their uh, his compound. Anyway, they're still chasing after the uh, icosahedron. There it goes. Look, uh, with the the team inside, apart from Jennifer and um, um, Mariner. So there you go. They're chasing after it. And uh, they, they, they come to their come to the realization that Jennifer had realized that they had split up, but she didn't know that Mariner had thought they'd split up or whatever. So they were both trying to sort of like not split up with each other and cause a scene. But anyway, they become friends after this, so that's fine. So anyway, they've got you just phase me out and all that. That's what she's saying. So right, so they're officially breaking up now. Meanwhile, they're stuck inside the icosahedron. Oh. Krog's there, look, didn't notice him. Uh, and other people that's been uh, glumpused up. Uh, but there you go, uh, Rutherford's detected the signal that's controlling the nanites, and if they can disrupt that signal with music... Is this a reference to Star Trek Beyond? Don't know, probably. Uh, they're going to they're gonna do that. Anyway, they think they can stop the glumpus, the icosahedron with a magnetic net or whatever. Meanwhile, there go, he's, he's enjoying being at Awol Falls. Um, but Ransom 
because uh, he's saying, you know, I was just your canary, your canary in the coal mine, you're sending me all the dangerous stuff. Uh, and he said, no, because Ransom tells me you're actually a really good officer and, you know, the most prepared person that we know. So there we go. Uh, so he decides, yes, he is, he is a good officer and he says, says, you noticed I was so prepared. So then he gets all his suntan lotion all over him. There we go. And so... Um, Milius's people can't get hold of him because he's all slippery. Look, there we go. Here we go. So they're running off. Look, but they can't get get hold of him because he's all slippery because of his suntan lotion. <laughs> he's too greasy. <laughs> so he frees them, and the the, I said, the capture uh, Milius and um, take him back uh, because all these people turn on him because they're not you know it's not real. They think it's part of some holiday experience, and they they go off. I've got uh, something else to do it. Five o'clock or whatever. Anyway, so they've they've gone inside the icosahedron, and she's brought the vibe tubes as Jennifer for Talin to play to what's her face because <laughs> I can never remember her name. I only remembered it then because it's said on screen. To thing him a bob, she's playing the uh... what they call them. <laughs> she's playing it anyway. Uh, there you go. And they interfere, and the the nanites all break apart. So there we go. Um, oh, this is where the uh, Milius's people say, you know, um, no, I've got other things to do. There we go. It's probably get my wife thinks I'm at the buffet. See, they're going doing other things. So they take in, um, they take Milius in. Uh, right. So um, it's where we learn that that Krog and and Tillin, I suppose kind of become friends now. We learn that Krog um, has accepted Vulcan logic into his heart and all that stuff. Will we see him together again? I don't know, but uh, but anyway, uh, they part on good terms and all that stuff. But then Rutherford notices that um, the signal that will control the nanites is coming from there. We go an intrepid class ship, a teeny tiny one inside the. The, the glumpy blue, glumpy bit. Um, uh, uh, can you see me point it there? We go on his finger, um, and then they get an income to transmission, and it's the USS en Endeavour. Um, there you go. They've been stuck in there for a month. They're from another universe. A quantum fissure opened, pulled them into our universe, uh, where everything's bigger than theirs. theirs. Uh, they were trying to find a way to get back, and what they would do, they were using the nanites to. You know, gather material to create enough energy to open the fissure so they could go home, but obviously it failed. Uh, so now and then we learn that uh, the mission to try and get them back uh, has been handed to uh, Admiral Milius because uh, Boimler's pulled some strings. We learn, see, Boimler's becoming a good officer. They all are becoming good officers, and the Cerritos is not going to be the ship that's rubbish anymore. Um, there we go, so Admiral Milius is going to help them uh, get back to their um, uh, their own dimension. There she mentions there's an Admiral Milius in her dimension too, and he's always milking, milking space whales or something like that. There you go. <laughs> but there you just milk whales. Anyway, so that's that's that bit sorted. So will we see the Endeavour again? Don't know. Um, yeah, I, thought, I thought actually thought they were going to find a way to make the Endeavour full size, our size. But uh, maybe they do. I don't know. Maybe we'll see them again, and maybe they can't get them back to their universe, and they just stay, uh, but become bigger. Or maybe they just use them as a teeny tiny ship for whatever. Uh, but uh, anyway, right. Uh, oh, ah, yes. Uh, Tillin has got an autograph of Krog. There he is, uh, and she doesn't really understand, you know, what an autograph is. But then Tendy kind of explains it, so she says, "Right, I'll keep it then." Um, Jennifer's off over to the Manitoba. Uh, I don't know what ship that is. Is it another California class or is it another uh, another sort of ship? I don't know. But uh, anyway, she's going over there. So they they leave. They part on good terms. There we go. Um, so everything's lovely. Basically, uh, the episode ends on a happy note, unless you call Jet because uh, he's got his hands back. There we go. We see him at the end of the bar there. Ensign Jet has got his hands back. You know, the Doctor, whatever she's called, to Anna. Well, I can't remember. There's too many bloody characters. Um, 
she's given him some new hands, grown him some new hands back, or you can just make him out at the, the edge of the screen. Uh, there he is, look. <laughs> there he is. Uh, but then Ransom's come looking for him, saying he's got a mission for, for Jet to go on, and it involves magma. And he's thinking, no, I've just got my new hands back. Um Oh, there you go. Try and wrangle some crystalline spiders and they're in magma and lava and stuff like that. Because it's dangerous stuff and he loves it. But obviously we know that uh, that's not, not true. There we go. And that's the end. That's the end of uh, that episode. And it's a fun episode. It is a fun episode. I, I did enjoy that. I did enjoy it. Um, I, I don't, maybe not quite as much as episodes one and two. Um, but it was, still, it was still a fun episode. Um, and there's not a lot in it. To be honest, I give the first two episodes an eight out of ten, and I think this might be to be a seven, or maybe even a seven and a half. There's not a lot in it. I did enjoy it. Um, so we saw some character development, didn't we? With um, uh, we're learning that they're becoming better officers now. They kind of have been all the way through, but uh, it's kind of um, solidified in this, particularly with Boimler. Boimler's becoming a um, a good officer. Uh, one that others are starting to depend on because he's always prepared um, and all that. So, yep, um, I enjoyed that. Uh, but I didn't know that uh, Marina were in a relationship with Jennifer. I thought it was just some weird... Uh, infatu- I thought Jennifer had just infatuated with her, but it didn't go anywhere. But apparently it did, so there we go. So, right, anyway, so the next episode um, that we're going to see next week... It's called uh, A Farewell to Farms. Um, and uh, I wonder if that is going to take us back. Were it all the way back in episode one of season one? I think it was episode one, or maybe two. I'm sure it was the first one. Where they went to that planet with the farmers on. The alien farmers and Boimler got... That alien, that big alien, that cow thing. Were like sucking him, wasn't it? <laughs> had, him in, had him in his mouth. It was like sucking the salt from his sweat or whatever. Because um, he thought it was going to be eaten, but you know, it was a harmless creature. It turned out in the end. I uh, wonder if it's going to be something to do with that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But um, we will see, won't we? Right. So we'll leave it there. Thank goodness I've recorded this episode this time, and not just talked for half an hour. <sighs> I was really angry, proper bad that what. Anyway, we've got through it this time. So we'll leave it there. And I look forward to next week's episode um, of uh, Lower Decks. And I'm sad that it's the final season. Maybe someday I'll pick it up. Fingers crossed they will. And uh, we'll continue. Because I know Mike McMahon wants to continue, doesn't he? He wants it to carry on. Um, So maybe Netflix, if you're watching, do what you did with Prodigy and uh, pick it up. Anyway, we'll leave it there. So... Thanks for watching. Live long and prosper. Look after each other. And until next time, I'll say this.